Um, so our next speaker is uh, Janie Maria. She is, uh, well, again, she used to work, but she's given up everything just to chase birds around the world. And I, according to me, she has some of the best pictures of birds around the world. And she's also the only person in India who's photographed uh, over 1,100 species just in India in, 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 in a very short span of time. So here's uh, Janie to showcase some of her bird work for us. Thanks, Kalia. Yeah. Thanks, Kalia. Good evening, friends. First of all, thank you for, uh, uh, thank you to NIF uh, for inviting me here. It's a privilege, uh, really, to be here. And uh, today I shall uh, speak about um, uh, some of the night birds uh, that are active in the night. So uh, for the children and all, they're very curious, probably, uh, to know about the birds which are active in the night. So mainly I'm concentrating on the night jars, then frog mouths, then owls, and also owlet nijas, which are a new uh, species, which was a new species for me because I just clicked them uh, last month or so. So uh, these are uh, birds of the night, and you know, they are masters of avian camouflage. They're very cryptically colored birds. Uh, so the, this is because, uh, you know, they just wanted to, uh, you know, avoid detection and predation mainly. Um, so we have about uh, 10 species of nightjars in our country. Uh, then we have two species of frog mouths. We have about 36 species of owls in our country. Out of that, 12 are endemic. Garima is here and she, might, she's, uh, she can correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, about six species of um, um, Nige, uh, owls are from Andaman and Nicobar Islands alone. And uh, yeah, Owlet Nijas, I think uh, we have about, uh, in, not, not in our country, they are uh, uh, specialities of New Guinea Islands and also Australia. So basically Austra Australasian species. Uh, so about 10, 10 of them, I think. So in the last uh, trip of mine to West Papua and Papua New Guinea, um, I saw four of them, uh, four, four types of them. So yeah, so I would really like to uh, start uh, uh, my uh, talk with basically gray-tiered Nijar. So uh, when, way back in 2011, when I asked uh, Mr. Eldos uh, in Thatekad, uh, probably some of you know about him, he's a great birder from there. So I asked about uh, the possibility of sighting of a gray-eared uh, Nijar. He just uh, told me that nobody asked me about this species in Thatekad. But, you know, I really wanted to say it because I was uh, closing, on, uh, closing in on some of uh, the species of Nijas in our country. So I told him I wanted to see and then he and another guide, um, Sanu, he took, they took me to, so, um, took me to a paddy field and uh, we saw three uh, Nijas flying around uh, there hunting for insects, but they never chose to perch anywhere. Um, and after a couple of years or so, I think there was a photograph of a brilliant photograph of a great eared Nijar uh, from Trivandrum in Kerala. Um, uh, but you know, I uh, before I reached, uh, I could reach the uh, place. Uh, it was seen about uh, continuously for about a week or so. But before I reached this play, uh, place, the bird had disappeared. The reason told to me was uh, probably a matter of predation by some cat or whatever. So anyway, I missed it. And uh, then this photograph, uh, it's, uh, it's a night shot, uh, which was uh, made in 2015, November. Um, but I really wanted to see that bird in the, in the day. So uh, the search was on. And uh, whenever I used to visit my hometown in Kerala, I used to go to Thatekad and my, with, with the help of my local friends there. We used to go for uh, the species, uh, to, uh, to check the species, but uh, we never uh, really saw it perched any time. Four or five times we had seen that bird, but then, you know, it used to take long distance flight because uh, they have very huge wingspans. And, you know, when you see first the bird, you, it really looks like a big, you know, a harrier sort of uh, a flight. I mean, uh, not the, uh, the style of flight, but the, with, the, with the appearance uh, in general. But I never got to uh, get it perched. Uh, then uh, finally, I made this perch uh, uh, shot in June 2017. So way back from 2011 to 2017, I was behind the species to get a photograph in the day. 
And uh, yeah, so this uh, much of research has gone behind, you know, not uh, in uh, the technical way, but you know, to uh, to study about the species, its behavior, how it uh, it will purge, how to approach that bird. It was quite a task. So this is one of my favorite Nigers from the country in terms of the hard work which I have put in. Um, this is also a night shot which I made uh, recently, quite recently. And to get an eye level shot of that bird, I had climbed up an adjacent tree. And uh, I've noticed that, you know, uh, when, you uh, when you take a photograph of um, very shy and alert birds, especially in the night, we have to be very careful that we do not shake any branches or trees in the vicinity of the bird. So yeah, this is the, uh, the night shot again. Then another important species uh, for me, uh, the European Niger, this uh, passage migrant uh, to our country, especially in the western parts, uh, especially, uh, the Kutch region, greater run of Kutch. So this was made from GRK. And uh, when Jugal sir called me uh, about the sighting, confirmed sighting of this species, I was just finishing a trip from Sp in Spiti Valley. And I was in Narkanda, and I was literally keeping my fingers crossed that I should not miss this bird again. So this was that uh, shot which I made in September 2017. Then uh, this is a shot of an Indian jungle Niger. It's an endemic Niger for us. Um, this is uh, fairly e um, easily seen in uh, Masinagudi, uh, Tamil Nadu, and also in Kerala, some parts. I've had good sightings. Uh, Grey Niger, this is, I think, a recent split from uh, the Indian, uh, I mean, earlier it used to be conspecific, I think, the Indian jungle Niger and the Grey Niger. The Grey Niger is a big darkish uh, species, and it's uh, seen mostly in the foothills of Himalayas and also um, in some parts of central India. I, I'm not very sure about the distribution map, but uh, I've seen uh, many times in Nagaland uh, and also in Arunachal. Then the, this is the Jordan's Niger, which I miserably imitated the call of. So whatever it is, this is an endemic Niger for us. Um, and uh, it's fairly uh, easily seen in Kerala uh, and also Western Ghats. Uh, I mean, uh, some parts of Western Ghats, Tamil Nadu, Nilgiris. Um, and, but it's not very easy to make a shot, I, I feel, because all, all the Nijas, you, you kind of see them just taking off uh, from under, uh, under your feet. So uh, it, this was uh, also a, f a photograph which I made after quite uh, some attempts. Then the large tail Nijar, um, this is uh, basically seen all uh, in the northern parts. So first sighting of mine uh, was a day roost of it in Chintamanikar uh, bird sanctuary in Kolkata, in the middle of the city. And, uh, but this particular uh, shot was made from Manas National Park uh, last, last April, I think. Yeah. And this is the Andaman Nijar, another endemic Nijar of ours. So there's a little story behind this. Um, this, is, uh, this was my last endemic which was remaining of Andaman Islands, uh, especially. So um, uh, I, I tried several times, but I never got to see the bird in the night, day, all the time. But uh, you know, f uh, I never came across this bird or the calls. So finally, Shashank Dalvi, you, um, some of you might uh, know about him as a very great birder in the country. And so he gave me um, great, uh, some good information and the location details of this particular bird uh, in Andamans. But unfortunately, that um, place was like that island off Bandur coast uh, in South Andaman um, was uh, not, uh, you know, uh, open for um, public, uh, like, uh, you know, for a bird watcher or whatever. It needed uh, permission. And uh, so I uh, reached the range officer and then he told me it's not in his authority to give me permission for this particular island. Then, but he was very kind enough to give me the phone number of the DFO. And uh, he also like, you know, he asked me several questions, but then he gave me finally permission on a couple of conditions. Uh, first, he told me that, you know, you should only take the forest department board and also the forest department employees along with you. And the second uh, condition was that I should only spend 30 minutes in that island. Uh, so I, anyway, I had no choice but to agree. Uh, but we, uh, I, we went there and uh, after, um, Landing a couple of uh, meters, or I think four or five meters into the forest, 
uh, I noticed uh, something like blackish uh, flying in the understory of the thickets. Uh, my first hunch was it's a drongo, but then you know the the flight pattern confused me. At, anyway, I pursued it, and then it was uh, indeed a uh, Andaman Niger. So I'd seen this Niger many times after that, but. You know, the first photograph which I made, which is not very great, I think probably like, you know, I didn't have a great gear that time as well. But, uh, you know, it always close to my heart because of the uh, uh, efforts I've put in. And also it was the last endemic for me for the Andaman and from the Andaman Islands. Then um, I'll just uh, speak about frog, frog mouths. Um, so we have about four, uh, two species of frog mouths in our country. Uh, this is a hogsen's frog mouth, male one. I love this picture because uh, you can see the prey and the predator in the same frame. Um, uh, first sighting of uh, this bird uh, was uh, from Nam Dafa in 2014. Uh, Chavang was with me. He was, a, a, he was the guide uh, for me that time. And uh, after the day's birding, uh, how Nam Dafa is a bit, little bit, uh, you know, exhaustive birding in that that we have to walk, uh, make kilometers and kilometers inside, and. Uh, uh, so, but you know, it gets dark uh, around uh, 4, 4, 4 30, especially in the winter. So, after the day's birding, we generally used to go for uh, nocturnals, owls, uh, then sm uh, small flying squirrels, and other small mammals. So, one such uh, night, we heard the call of, call of the frog mouth, and then we uh, tried our level best to locate uh, the bird, but uh, to no avail. And, uh, but then we st decided to stay on a uh, couple of uh, nights uh, more and search for this bird. And uh, two more nights, I think this is the last night, uh, we, uh, we got uh, a very good sighting of the female uh, up very close uh, in a tree. Um, and, uh, but uh, we were very happy to see, I, it, was, uh, it was much a sought after bird for me, so I was very happy. But, the double happiness lied in that, you know, we also could uh, spot a male uh, hogs and frogmouth, a couple of trees behind, inside the forest. And at that time, uh, the photograph I made uh, was uh, uh, the first photograph of the male hogs and frogmouth from our country. This I made much later, and this is from the Mishmi Hills. And uh, this species is um, uh, generally seen uh, it, it's it a bit a bit tough to find, but I have had multiple sightings from Mizoram, Manipur, and also in Arunachal. And um, this is Ceylon frogmouth, our endemic frogmouth uh, from uh, Indian subcontinent, India and Sri Lanka mainly. This is also a male bird, and uh, this was also returning while returning from uh, you know a night chase for a spot billy eagle owl. It was just a uh, serendipity sighting, uh, sighting. It was just sitting on a twig and gave a very good picture. And uh, this is the male uh, frogmouth again in the day roost. Okay, now uh, moving on to the owls. So uh, these are wonderful species. This species always fascinates me. Uh, so as I said, we have about 20, uh, 12 uh, endemic owls in our country and about 36 uh, species of owls. And Adam and Barn Owl, this is also, a, uh, this picture I could make probably after six, seven trips to Andaman uh, Islands. Uh, you know, uh, we have uh, five species uh, endemic to Andaman, so all the four I had seen, but then this was remaining. But it's like, you know, it, everyone used to say that, okay, this can be seen uh, around the Port Blair area, but I always missed it. And when I saw, I saw this with a catch, so I think it was feeding its chicks. Uh, it's, it said that uh, generally barn owl population is very good for, you know, with, uh, 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 um, the, uh, around 80,000, 80, I think, uh, rats or rodents are, uh, can be uh, killed by, you know, mice and rats are killed by barn owl uh, per year or something, that statistics, I think. But whatever it is, uh, there's a wonderful species uh, to see. And, um, yeah, I had... Uh, great sighting that uh, that day. Then another species of owl which I really had uh, put in a lot of uh, time and effort is the spot-bellied eagle owl or the forest eagle owl. So forest eagle owl is a little bit uh, thinner and it's a little bit different in the subspecies uh, from the north and the south. So south we see a little bit bulky and uh, uh, and the north one is a little bit slim, slimmer. So uh, I had 
uh, cited uh, the forest eagle owl from Manus National Park also uh, sometime uh, later, but in the first sighting of uh, was really uh, troublesome in, in the in the forests of Tatekard, that Urulan Thadni area. Uh, elephant elephant herds uh, are always a menace there. So we had a lot of elephant chase and all behind this uh, shot. But this particular shot is made from Masena Gudi. Uh, again, uh, a problematic area with elephants. Uh, where a place where you know you can uh, really uh, you should be really be careful when uh, where to uh, you know look for this and. You have to be very, very, very uh, you know, you have to really be uh, cautious and go with uh, uh, very uh, people, uh, people who really know about the forest. Even though my hometown is very close to this, I, I do not go there alone in Thatekart because of the elephant and any, any other threat which can come up. Uh, then, then Ceylon bay owl, this is one of our uh, flagship uh, species. Um, it's, uh, I think, probably another... I mean, around six years, I've uh, searched for this uh, bird to get a good perch. Generally, you um, good perch and also good sighting in the night. So you, uh, these birds, when you see them, you see it continuously. Like, you know, if you see it sight in the morning, you can see it still in the evening. But the next day, if you, uh, whether you will see that bird in the same perch, same tree, is a matter of question. But, you know, I think that they will be in the vicinity, but they will not choose to probably roost in the same tree the next day. They might have a rotation pattern, which probably uh, is yet to be studied. So um, I'd seen it um, many times, they roost, like once I was in uh, my home and then somebody called from the tech card, they're telling that, Madam, the bird is sitting there, if you can come, you can come, uh, you can really make a shot. So that was a daytime uh, shot, and this is, uh, which I made recently, it's from uh, in the night. So I really like this species because of its uh, cuteness and also its call. Its call is really, really very melodious, you know, unlike any raptor uh, call or any owl call, any screeching call, it's like a very sweet kind of call. And the little owl uh, from Ladakh is a higher altitude species in our country. So I've seen it in uh, Ladakh area and also Sikkim, uh, North Sikkim and also um, Sela Pass, so Tibetan Plateau and a very high altitude uh, owl for us. Then the Nicobar uh, scops owl. So this is a rufous morph of the Nicobar uh, scops owl. Um, this is only found in, I think, the central, central Nicobar Islands. Um, yeah, it's a fully rufous uh, bird. Uh, it's an, um, so when you see it in the night, you really feel like a little, you know, satanish kind of look, you know, very cute little, uh, you know, devil kind of look in the, in the, in the night. And uh, yeah, so we, uh, when we found this species, um, we didn't have any information on that. So it was like, I think uh, Shashank and Garima and all, before uh, my trip, they had seen the species, but you know, uh, probably they failed to, you know, uh, share it in the public forum or something. Uh, I didn't have any information about that at, that, at, the, at that particular time, but uh, yeah. So uh, when we used to go for the night uh, ride, um, uh, uh, in, in, in the islands, we chanced up across this uh, species. So it's al always a great species for me because uh, it was like an unusual, uh, I'm not unusual, it's a very important sighting uh, as far as I, my birding uh, is concerned. Then the snowy owl, uh, which I wanted to show here because um, this, uh, this uh, shot was made in July. Uh, 2017, I think. So, uh, in winter in the US and Canada, it's pretty easy to find a uh, snowy owl. But to see the snowy owl in summer, it's really a task. Some of the researchers who are into this um, and the snowy owl, uh, they told me that probably it is very uh, tough to find a uh, snowy owl at this point of time in the summer. But you can try in Baro in Alaska. So, uh, you, I tried uh, that area which was uh, told to me by uh, by the uh, by the researcher, uh, but then he had told me that you know this year uh, that particular year they had uh, not seen much nest of the species, but uh, so he he actually doesn't know uh, where uh, where exactly the species are seen. Uh, but then he he wished me luck. So that particular uh, day, uh, this was this uh, shot was made at 1:30 a.m. in the night. So uh, evening, um, I was like kind of going along uh, the area, the drive where he had told me, but then I couldn't uh, find. Then towards late, uh, late, I think around 9.30 p.m. or something, I saw something white very far. 
and uh, you know it, I had uh, put a two uh, x on my 500 mm uh, lens, but still it was like a speck. But then I could identify it as a small uh, snowy owl indeed. And I, later on, again I came back, and then it was a little bit closer. But then it appeared really, really shy, and uh, it was a very tough shot to make because the wind was uh, the wind speed was very high, and um, uh, it was like very, very chilly and. Uh, the tundra, you know, when you step on it, you, you really kind of uh, can say, uh, sink up to uh, knee uh, height. So the, the cold was coming from, the wetness and the cold was coming up from my, uh, my shoes and it was like chilly and all that. And uh, yeah, so this, uh, this shot was made in the, in the night and uh, it is really a dearly shot for me for, uh, for that kind of uh, extreme temperatures which was there uh, that particular day. Then Owlet Nijas, uh, these species are not in our country, but then you know they're a very, very um, cute or in different looking species with, they're related to frogmouths and Nijas from the appearance, uh, from, the, from the appearance and the behavior, but you know they have a looks of an owl, owl, you know, uh, when, you, when you see them you feel that an owl, a small kind of owlet is staring at you. So this is a fel uh, feline uh, owlet Nijas from Arfak Mountains in West Papua. We had very brilliant views of this uh, species at uh, that time. Then this is the mountain owlet Niger. I think probably you have also seen a very, uh, we had a very good sighting of this uh, species. This is also in our Fak Mountains, but it really, really <laughs> requires some arduous climb up to reach uh, up to that uh, area where you see this. But then we were uh, fortunate to uh, see uh, this species. I think it is a female or something, but we found only one that day. It was supposed to be common, but then we only saw one. Um, then the Vogelkop uh, Owlet Nijar, uh, this also from Arfak Mountains. Uh, it's not in that high elevation at the, as the summit, but then um, this was uh, also seen in that area. Uh, generally, they roost the tree holes, but you know, when the guide, you know, just they kind of little, little bit give a tap on the, on the tree stump and then uh, the base of the tree rather and then they will just peep out of the hole and then just look at and like look at us and go back but that day i don't know probably it got disturbed or whatever and it just went and perched in a neighboring uh, small tree and gave us brilliant views but yeah that, that's the vogel cop uh, owlet nightjar it's also called allied i think then uh, this is not a great picture, it's a very low light shot. So, um, so in Narfak Mountains in, of West Papua, the conditions are really, really very bad. Uh, the lights and uh, the light is really dim and you have to really uh, gear up your, uh, you know, lenses, to, I mean, your camera to uh, probably 15,000 or so ISO, but, you know, it was performed. I mean, uh, this is uh, one of the shots which I made in like very low light conditions. So this is from... Uh, that the same condition exists in Papua New Guinea too. Um, so we, they have uh, the barred owlet Niger. It's very common in uh, Papua New Guinea and also Australia. So um, yeah, this is the last uh, of the four uh, owlet, uh, species, owlet Niger species which we saw in uh, New Guinea Islands. And I think uh, that is it. Acknowledgements uh, without all these people's help, my friends and, uh, uh, you know, guides, I would not have been able to make any of these shots. So I thank all of them. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for being attentive. Thanks, yeah. Sir, thank you so much.